don't want to paint the engine bay. If you've got a super nice interior and you don't want to be breaking anything, this is the right way to do it. We're taking the whole dash out. Did that once, I'll never do it again. You just do it the right way. Hello and welcome to Gearhead 704. I'm Matt and today we are again working on my SSP project. Uh, if you saw one of the last videos, I was ripping stuff out of the engine bay because I want to paint the engine bay before the motor goes back in it. And so that's what I'm going to focus on today. I need to pull the dash out uh, to get some of the wiring harness out of the way. And of course, while I'm there, I might as well go ahead and replace the heater core and a few other things. So I'm going to get into all that today, but first, you can see I've got the gates open right here. Oh, look, kill that guy. <laughs> Gotta love these bugs. Anyway, I got the gates open right here. A couple of Fox bodies. We got Matt's 85, Jen's 90. Actually, I kind of parked those pretty well. I kind of, that's kind of cool. Wasn't even mean to do that. Anyway, and we got the van over there behind that Jetta thing. I don't know who drives that Jetta. No, I actually do know, but anyway. So that's a Fox Resto's van. That's where I'm at today, Fox Mustang Restoration. That's where I've been working on the car, in case you don't know. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the van back here because last time for the SSP, we ended up uh, pushing it and that was not fun. So today, instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pull it in. So let me move the van. We'll get started on that. Actually, you know what? The van's a Ford. It's got a big old push rod in it. <laughs> Let's go ahead and hear some of that Ford power. We're gonna get a cold start on the Fox Resto van. Okay, so it wasn't really a cold start. It was more of a warm start, but uh, yeah, it definitely needs some exhaust. <laughs> All right, guys, like I told you, what we're doing today is we're taking the whole dash out for multiple reasons. Uh, one thing is I need to get some of these extra wires out of here like this. I'm gonna pull those harnesses through. And also I do need to replace the heater core, a lot of other stuff. So the dash needs to come out. So I'm gonna bring Matt in uh, from Fox Mustang Restoration. He's been on the channel before and Matt's gonna kind of show me how to do it. Well, you guys will see, and then we're gonna time and see how quick I can do it. So here's Matt, how you going, Matt? Good to hey, see you. you doing, Good. So we've got, you got a lot of parts laid out here for me and I think this is instructional. It is. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, basically I wanna go over the removal of the parts with you on how to remove the dash. I figured it would be a really good idea to show you on parts that are already removed and to tell you what sizes the screws and bolts are and also how to, you know, where the locations are and how to remove them. So once you get into the car, you'll actually be able to identify it with the clutter of everything else in the car. Yeah, I think that'll help a lot. So this is basically the setup, guys, and yep. you're also gonna get to learn with me. Then we'll see how fast I can get out of the car, so. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, one of the things that I like to do on how-to videos is to show you guys every step of the way. I know most how-to videos, when you watch them, you're gonna see them start to take away something. You know, they'll be like, oh, hey, do this, you know, pull this out here. And all of a sudden they fade away and then the part's installed or it's out and you're like, oh, well, how, how was that done? A lot of times it's because the part is difficult and they may not wanna film and show that. I want to try to help you guys to actually, I like to create how-to videos to where you can actually use it like a manual and be able to actually do the job yourself as a novice. Right. I used to write some videos for magazines. That's the way I did it. They used to get irritated at me because they have to do two and three part two and three part articles over two or three months to get all the information in there. But that's the only way you're gonna get it done and get it done right and confidently. So that's the way that we're gonna go about this. So I've got basically a whole dash set up here. I can show you uh, how to take it apart, where to take the bolts out, uh, special tricks for undoing certain things, special tools you may need if something gives you trouble. So we're just gonna do a quick overview of how to, how to remove the dash with the stuff on the table, and then Matt's gonna try to uh, use that information to take his first dash out. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned that, you know, all the steps as far as you covering them all and not skipping steps, and that's definitely what we try to do here on the channel. So, yeah, this will be very helpful for me and you guys, so let's go ahead and start covering this here. We got right. a lot of tools for one thing. Right, so I got the tools out. Uh, basically, this is about the amount of tools that you're gonna to need to use. Uh, maybe a pair of pliers with some needle nose to take some cables out. We'll pull that out when we're actually into the car, but we're gonna cover the majority of it here. Um, obviously, you're gonna have a flathead screwdriver, Phillips head screwdriver. Um, I got this little tool. You'll see it's kind of like you can put adapter ends in it for all different types. This is a T20. Yeah, T20 to take the uh, instrument cluster screws out. So I'll show you when he does the car, we'll show you how this works. Uh, you're definitely gonna need this. 
get your electrical terminal removal tool. We'll that show you how nifty. that works. Yeah. Yep, special tool. You guys probably never seen that before, but it's pretty cool. They know how I have it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And uh, so basically the only thing you're gonna need to take these out, this is of course being that if it has OEM or original hardware in it. A lot of times somebody will take a dash out and they just throw whatever in. So may have some mismatched hardware if it's been into before, but I'm gonna go over as if it was from the factory. Right, this is for starting from stock basically. Right. So you got a 14 millimeter socket. You're gonna need that for the steering column. Uh, you got a seven millimeter socket here. Uh, that's gonna be used for most of the small screws in there. The two other sides, you got your 10 millimeter. Uh, that's going to be used to remove the hood cable. And you got your eight millimeter to handle the rest of the screws. And that's really all the tools that you're going to need to do this. That's not many sockets, actually. It's not. I got a few trick tools here. Impact driver, I'll show you where we use that at. There's a part that usually can be stubborn that you just can't get a screw out. So I'll show you how to use that. Uh, but what we're going to start with, the so first thing you're going to have to do is remove the center console. We're not going to go over completely on how to remove the center console, but I am going to show you where it matches to the dash. So center consoles basically made up to the dash right here. That's part of the dash. Right. The first screws, you got to undo your two switches. If you got a 90 to 93, you're only going to have one switch. You got two screws here and two screws here. Ford used two different options of screws in there. The most that I've seen has been like this style holding this holding this uh, duct in. It's a seven millimeter head with a T20 Torx hole in it. So you can use either a seven millimeter or a T20. The other screw that they could use there would be just a standard Phillips head screwdriver. If you've got the seven millimeter and this thing is too tight because, well, again, the reason I'm covering this is because this screw, a lot of times get locked in there to where you can't get it out. And a lot, I've seen a lot of people actually break the consoles to remove them. If it's a seven millimeter, that's, you're gonna be able to break that loose, no problem. You got a seven millimeter socket ratchet. If you need to get a longer ratchet for, you know, leverage to break it loose, they break loose, no problem. However, if you if Ford used a Phillips head screw in there, and I have personally came across this, you almost never can get it out with a Phillips head screwdriver. I have almost always stripped them out. So I found a great way to do that. It's an impact driver, all right? You usually get these that come with four bits, a small Phillips, a large Phillips, a small flat, and a large flat. You're gonna use the small Phillips, put it in there. What happens is this uses impact to, to break stuff loose. So you can set it, whether it be removing or installing, it goes both ways. But when you hit it, you'll actually hit this with the hammer. And when you hit it, you'll notice when it goes down, it actually turns a little bit. See that right there? And then if we do it the other way, it turns the other way. This is a tool to use to break loose stubborn screws. So this tool here, if the, you got Phillips head holding in your center console to your dash, this is the tool you need to get it out. If it's a seven millimeter, just use your seven millimeter and you're straight to go. So that's uh, gonna be the hardest part in removing the center console. You do wanna remove the shifter. A lot of times you'll see guys kind of squeeze it out. They'll leave the shifter in there and then they're pushing up on this bezel right here. They actually have to flex this part of the console to clear the shifter. Mm. I have personally split consoles right there in half, cracked them by doing that. Oh wow. That I did that once, I'll never do it again. You just do it the right way. Take the little bit extra time, remove it the way you're supposed to remove it and you don't mess anything up. I've done heater cores on eight, 11, 14,000 original mile cars. Mm. So you don't want to be like taking the dash out and like laying it on your shifter. That's what a lot of guys do. They'll scratch it up. They'll take the dash out. They'll leave everything connected over here. And in my opinion, this is the wrong way to do it. And I'll tell you why. They'll leave everything connected over here. They'll take it loose over here. And what they do is they pull the dash away. They tilt it to the driver's side so they can access the heater core. Well, when the console, sit, when the dash is sitting like this, yeah, it may be sitting on the seat here, but you've got brackets and the shifter right here. And if it's laying down on here and you're leaning over the dash and you're leaning on the dash, you're pushing it there, that's a great way to mess up a really nice interior if you got a nice interior. It is a faster way to kind of just cock it and do it like that, but it's not the right way. You really mess up and break some plastic and some interior stuff. So it's just the, not the right way to do it. So we're gonna show you how to completely remove it. We're gonna start with the instrument cluster. You gotta pull this off first. So that goes over top right there and you'll see it when Matt takes off, but that's what this little tool's for. Usually, you get, if it's a Phillips head, you can get a Phillips head bit, but usually there's gonna be a T20 screw right there, and this is a nice low profile tool to just break that loose, to get that out. Uh, Cause the windshield's right here and you can't fit a ratchet and other stuff in there. So this is a great tool Tight space, yeah. Right, and once you get those out, you obviously got a couple screws here, here, here. You know, after removing, popping these bezels off, you take these screws out, then you gotta get your switches out. Well, a lot of people have problems removing the switches. You get your flathead screwdriver. There's two little tabs down in there. And when I take it out, I'll show you. But what you gotta do is you pull up on this lightly 
kind of compress one tab then compress it's still getting pressure out compress the other one you're gonna notice it kind of pop like that and if you look right here these are the tabs i was pushing so you want to do it like that so you pull pressure get one loose do the other you may have to go back and forth a couple times but keep steady pressure out once that's out it's still retained on the inside so the pull to get that out you just pull straight out a lot of times they're a lot stiffer but you see these right here but once you get it cocked out like that you just pull straight out and it may take a little bit of force but it will pop out once it pops out you just disconnect your two plugs quick point of reference there's several different types of plugs that can be used on for if you've got a split in it if there's a split in the tabs you actually push it down to pull it off you do not pry it up because this plastic is not meant to be pried up these little grooves go below that so you push that down to pull that out so if you got a split in it you push down if you don't have a split in it you pull up for the most part that's your standard rule of thumb with this type of system and that's when this little tool comes in great this will go right in like that and you see it it kind of wedges that up it unlocks it you can pull it out great thing about this if you can't get to it this way tool goes the other way too nice you, you like both that yeah way you know if this is up against a firewall and you can't get in like this you just go in with the hook great little tool next is going to be the instrument cluster instrument cluster get your four screws speedometer cable and your two plugs uh, the two plugs and the speedometer cable can be very difficult to get out there is a trick to it so i've got the instrument cluster plug here there's locks on both sides and this is where it gets tricky especially since you usually can't see what you're doing you cannot do one and then pop it and then do the other it binds these these plugs you have to compress them both at the same time and pull it out equally if you don't it won't release so those need to be compressed together at the same time pulled out equally if you get one and it cocks and the other one's still in pop it back in start over again put it back in and try yeah, it put okay. it back in and if, again keep doing it until you get it out evenly it's the only way it's going to come out same thing for the other plug over there i guess same thing Go. same exact plug yeah now we're going to do the speedometer cable again you're going to be doing this pretty much blindfolded because it's in the back side of the dash it locks in and doesn't come off if you notice you've got this collar right here this collar has a tab that sticks out that is where you push what you do is you reach behind there you find the tab and you cock that tab meaning just pushing it up and you see how in relation to this plastic to the metal collar you notice how it kind of it gets at an angle it's not exactly lined up anymore that's what unlocks the speedometer cable then it comes right out that's a trick you don't pull it straight out you actually have to feel for the tab compress it and if you look down in there right there there's it lifts up that little locking tab that unlocks it and allows you to pull it out that locking tab locks into this groove right here now that tab right there is where the groove is you cock that collar and it It'll comes straight out, out. Okay. yeah normally this core cable wouldn't come out because it would be in the other the other end would be in the transmission so there we got the instrument cluster out we got the center console out and the reason I pulled the instrument cluster out is because even if you try to do it by prying that out, by prying the dash out and leaving this hooked up, the speedometer cable is usually very short. You got maybe just a couple of inches left to be able to pull that out. Being able to pull the dash out with the instrument cluster hooked up, you're really limited to the length of the speedometer cable and you can really damage the speedometer cable and anything else. So in my mind, spend the extra time, take it apart properly, and you don't have to worry about it. Now we're gonna cover to the main retaining screws to the dash. I always leave the top for last to hold it in. First thing you're gonna need to do is drop the steering column. Your steering column surround here. You take that out to be able to remove this. So you do have to remove the steering column shroud before you remove this. Okay. When we're getting ready to remove the steering column, we're not gonna completely remove it, we're just gonna drop it down. These holes right here, they're nuts that hold that on. They're studs in the car and the nuts hold it on. That's what your 14 millimeters for. Take those four nuts out. On the front, there's actually two, they're doubled up. There's one holding the bracket for the hood cable. Take the first two off, the bracket for the hood cable will drop down, and then go ahead and take the other two off here, take the two off here, and then the steering column will drop. Should drop down. If you're completely removing the dash 100% from the car, which I recommend, you do need to go ahead and disconnect all the electrical connections because the end, the dash wiring harness is attached to the dash itself you can separate it from the dash but it's a lot of work to me it's a lot more difficult and a lot more work time wise than just unplugging everything so that's what i do pull that out now we're going to start taking some of the screws out where are the screws holding the dash first thing is this one right here 
This is underneath the steering column. This is the main reason why you need to drop the steering column to remove this. The nice thing about this is you do not have to remove this nut all the way. You just need to loosen it. There is a V groove that, that the stud and the nut will slide between and then you tighten it up. The V groove is part of the car. So you just loosen it a little bit. You don't have to take the nut all the way off and it will slide out when you're ready to remove the dash. So that's all you gotta worry about there. Then you got your main retaining screws uh, for the dash hole. You got one down here in the corner. You do need to remove the kick panels from the car to do that. You got one here. You got one on the opposite side right here. Those are eight millimeter screws or an eight millimeter head screw. That's when you use your eight millimeter socket, pop those out, now that's loose. Now the dash is almost completely loose. First thing you gotta do is take your speaker grills off. It's one of these seven millimeters or T20 typically is what holds that speaker grill on. Take the one screw off and they pop out. A lot of times they're held in with snap clips so you do need to pry directly out on them, maybe a little bit to the outside to get them to pop loose. Once they're popped, you'll do the same thing on both sides. Once they're popped loose, you're gonna have a series of five screws holding the top of the dash in. Right here, 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 and here. So the two outer ones are under the speaker grill, and the three center ones are underneath this defrost vent. I got this little tool, It's a, I got it from a glass company, it's just a plastic little prior scraping tool. I like using it for here, because the plastic's not, unlike a screwdriver, a metal screwdriver, this little plastic piece isn't gonna scratch anything on your dash. So I, you can just you know get under there, Pop that up. It's got, uh, I think, one, two, three retaining clips. So I start at one side and then I do the middle and then this vent comes out. Then you can access the last of the screws right there. So there will be one or two things that still need to be removed that's not here that we'll cover once it's in the car. I know you'll do a time lap. Maybe we'll do a little highlight on just a couple of pieces. Uh, but once that's done, you've got your instrument cluster loose. You do need to take your AC controller out to disconnect the blend door cable. And you do need, if you want to pull the dash completely out with the wiring harness, you do need to unplug all the connectors on the passenger side that goes to the computer harness. And the driver's side is the main harness goes into the firewall. So you will need to take your battery tray out, disconnect all the plugs there, disconnect it from the ignition coil and from the, and from the mass hair harness and then pull all that out and you can get it all out together. It's a lot more work than a lot of the quickie videos that you've seen that say, you know, we can get a dash out in 20, 30, 50 minutes, something like that. The problem is doing it that way, you're very high potential of messing up part of the interior. So if you've got a super nice interior and you don't wanna be breaking anything, this is the right way to do it. It takes a little bit longer than just the quickie, but once we get the dash out, uh, we're also gonna show you why it's best to pull the dash when working on the heater box. So we're gonna do the evaporator and the heater core. The heater case needs to be completely removed from the car to do the evaporator. So that's the route we're going at it. We're doing it like a full restoration on getting everything, everything repaired. All right, did you guys get all that? Well, I have to right now. So luckily I can check the tape if I need to. So, and I do have the expert right here, but I'm gonna try. So I was paying attention. Anyway, let's see how long it takes. And like Matt said, if there's anything during the process we didn't cover right here with you guys, I will highlight that for you because the intention of this video is to let you know exactly how to do it, do it correctly if you wanna do this at home. Hey guys, this is me from the future. I'm interrupting the dash video because we're gonna stop it right here. I wanted to finish this up right where Matt is talking about how to um, remove the dash. In the next upload, we're gonna pick up right with me trying to remove it timed like I said. So we are gonna do that. It's gonna be in the next uh, video. The reason why, otherwise it would be a super long video. So I'm gonna make this a two-parter. So stay tuned for that, look for that. That will should be the next video right out after this one. And I just realized looking at it, you know, it's gonna be too long. So. Uh, anyway, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you're stopping in for the first time, please subscribe because I do upload two times a week, every Sunday and Wednesday. We'll see you next time on GearHead 704. All right, let's see if an almost 40 year old can still dunk the ball.